family, we are here to declare today that it is the breath that the Lord has given us, the Ruah breath that he breathed into us at creation. That is the breath that is in our lungs. So using that breath, we are going to pour out a praise unto him and to him only. For he alone is worthy to be received glory and to receive honor. So it's the breath that's in our lungs. So we came to pour out the praise to him and him alone. Amen. Amen. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out a praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only, because it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our Praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So we pour. So we pour.
we pour out our praise. We want to sing hallelujah. Amen. For the Lord is high above the heavens. Amen. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging him always. And all the people say, Halle, 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 The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging him yeah. always. And all the people say, Halle, 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 The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging him always. And all the people say, Halle, 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 Do me like the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Can't nobody hold me down and keep me lifted at the same time. Can't nobody watch my back and my front. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. And then he can love a wretch like me. He is a wonder. Hallelujah. Jesus, yeah. what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 yeah, yeah. what a wonder you are. Mm. Jesus, 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 yeah, yeah. what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. That's the whole song you can sing with us come on say Jesus 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 Jesus, Jesus. what I want what I wonder you A wonder, say it, say it, come on, say it. Jesus, 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 what a wonder, what a wonder you are. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, 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 what a wonder, what a wonder you are. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, 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 what a
Hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an excellent Savior, a mighty God. Yes, we do. And I love him. I love him because he first loved me. I love him because he brought me from what I was to what I am. And thank God I'm not what I used to be. And I love him forever because he is my king. He is my master. He is my savior. He is my shelter in the time of storm. I love you forever with all my heart. I love you forever. forever. together. I love you. I love you forever. forever. With all my heart. All my heart. Lord, you know I love you. Yeah. I love you forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and leads me beside the quiet stream. Yeah, yeah. He restores my failing health, yeah, yeah. and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm saved, so saved, saved in his arms. All right, all right, all right. Sing it again, sister. Sing it. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Let's me rest in the meadow's grass and leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hell and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying. Hey, so say, say in his arms. We in the storm, in the storm, in the storms of life, of life is raging, and the billows. over me and prepared and took care of us, Lord, you deserve it. Times that we've wasted and times that we've made mistakes, you've still blessed us. You deserve it. We didn't have our own back, but you had our back. Lord, yeah, yeah, you deserve yeah. it. We walked out on us. You never left us, and you told us to continue on pressing towards the mark. Lord, you deserve it. Amen. Amen. My hallelujah belongs to you. All right. And my hallelujah belongs to you. 
My hallelujah belongs to you, Lord. Oh, Lord. And my hallelujah belongs to you. Cause you deserve it. I'll sing my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. I'll sing my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. I'll sing my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You Sing all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all of it. You deserve all of it. You deserve all of it. Somebody will be holler, you deserve it. You deserve it. You ought to just say it to the Lord, you deserve it. You talking to him now, you deserve it. He can't hear your voice, come on. He, you deserve it. You deserve it. God, you deserve it. Come on, that's what worship is. 
Worship is you expressing yourself to the Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. The Lord wants to know how do you feel about it. Not the praise team. What, hold on. What, what saith you? Well, here's what I'm saying. You deserve it. All the power, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. All, you, you, you alone. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Come on, help me say hallelujah. Help me say hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Here's it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, you deserve it. Don't talk to me, talk to him. You deserve it. Say it like you mean it. You deserve it. You do, you do. Come on, you deserve it. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. God bless you. You deserve it. You deserve it. That, that flies in the face of I deserve it. Amen. You do know, you know, you know what sin is? Sin is robbing God of his glory. In other words, you be saying, we be saying, I deserve it. I deserve some. We deserve some, but it ain't no praise. What I deserve, I don't have nothing to do with no praise. I I deserve. We deserve. I, I, hold on, can I, 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 I? I'm not gonna go to hell by myself. We deserve hell. We deserve it. We all of us deserve to slide right from hell, from earth to hell. All of us, because of our sin. I know, I know, y'all don't do wrong. <laughs> I I gotta tell because y'all looking at me. I can't. Ain't no need to be standing up here, acting like I got it together. Amen. I don't have it together. Somebody said, Reverend, if you don't have it together, I know what you're thinking. Reverend, if you don't have it together, why you up there? I don't know. I'll find out when I get to heaven. I don't know. I showed an ask for it. I was comfortable being, hold on. I was comfortable being a child of God with a Sunday school class. I was fine. As my buddy would say, I was cool in the game. I'm fine. Next thing I know, I looked around, and he started doing things that I didn't deserve. Amen. Amen. So what should our response be when we recognize we don't deserve it? Here's, here's our response. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Simple as that. But you gotta, you gotta, you, and, and, and you gotta keep saying it. See, here's the issue. Here it is. When the Lord is blessing us, it's easy to say, Lord, thank you. Am I right? Talk to me. Well, I mean, when your blessings are flowing, there's, there's times when, when your blessings are flowing, right? Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. But you also got to say it in the middle of a storm. Hold on. When, when a few blessings then it got taken. Thank you. Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. 
Is that what Job said? Let me see if I can help you. Job said that, right? And he was wrong. The Lord didn't take it. Satan did. The Lord just allowed him to. Then read the passage. He was right on the front end. Lord, you gave it. And you, the Lord did not directly take it. He allowed Satan to take it. Amen. So, you know, we eat when, eat when, when we in a storm, we don't even have that right. We all, when things ain't going right in our life, boy, we can sure have it wrong. Anybody remember Jonah? Ran from the Lord, right? In the belly of a fish. He talking about, Lord, whatever you, whatever you want me to do. I'll do it. Right? He said, if you want me to preach in Nineveh, I'll preach. Right? But in, watch me now, a little softer. In Jonah's mind, he said, you know what? I'm going to go on and preach. I'm going to go on and tell him 40 days, and God going to judge you. He said, because I know they ain't going to repent. And they did. And God said, I'm going to save it. Now he's mad again. Did y'all get that? His, his repentance up in the fish really has some, some conditions in his mind. He's like, okay, I'm going to do it. You know what? Because I, I don't like these people. So I'm going to go head on and preach judgment to them. And God going to get him. And he did. So here he is. He pouting. And even in the midst of his pouting. Uh, cranky. God still have a flower. To give him some shade. Did I just talk to somebody? Even when we pout and cranky, with our ulterior motives, can I share this with you? God ain't going to get somebody because you want him to. <laughs> the way that Jonah felt about Nineveh ain't the way that God felt about it. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, one day we're going to get it. That God don't feel about that person the way you feel. I, God said, I know what they did. He said, I know what you did too, though. Are y'all like me? I forgot what I did. Y'all ain't talking to me. I forgot. Oh, I forgot. I forgot all about that. There's some stuff I forgot. God said, but I didn't. And you acting like you always been. We asked a question today. I'm going to get to We asked a question. We asked a question today. I've asked it before. If, if, would I be all right being, if I was my own daddy? Would I be all right being my dad? Guess what I said? Guess what I said? I would now. I would now. But I didn't have no kids at 69. I had them at 25 and all that. So what about them? No. No. I would not have wanted to be my daddy at 25 years old. Y'all done got quiet. That means you wouldn't either. You might remember how you was at 25? You was tripping. You weren't hollering, he deserved it. Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. You know how we get out. Come on, Terry. Come on. 
I would now, but this ain't this this not childbearing, John. Well, that's why he deserves it. Give the Lord a hand clap for him. I don't know what may be going to that sequility. I got to say it wrong. I don't know why I went into that. But um, God is good. I said God is good. Let's worship the Lord in our giving. Acts, excuse me, Matthew 23, 23. Let's turn there. I know you know it, but let's let's turn there. Um, as you turn there, I want to um, remind us that we have uh, discipleship tomorrow night. Tremendous time on uh, last Monday. Sister Janelle did a great job. Give our hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This Monday night, we're going to take it even on another step we have and tomorrow night we're gonna have uh, Jamal and Janelle. Amen. Amen. Real talk, y'all, real talk, real talk, real talk. Two of the brightest minds you'll ever find. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Real talk. Two of the brightest minds. And I ain't gonna say black minds. No, that's, no, no, minds, period. Are y'all with me here? Just, amen. Let's thank God that we have some bright minds. Amen. Thank God we have some, some bright minds. And they ain't the only bright minds we have. Amen. How many folk are bright-minded? Raise your hand if you, you got a bright mind. Huh, hold on, I'm just, let me, no, real talk. Hold on. See you tomorrow night. <laughs> if we got bright-minded people teaching, and you believe you're bright-minded, you're going to be where bright minds are. I'm going to be here. You know why I'm going to be here? Because bright mind recognize bright mind. Somebody yell, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right. We got Pastor Larry Bryce coming next week at 8 o'clock. We call it a one-service revi revival all the way from Dallas, Texas. Amen? Amen. He, he treated me when I was there like I was preaching and, and uh, doing a revival for him. I went to a place called Big T's, right? Man, Pastor Bryce didn't just buy my food. He bought my clothes. I said, man, he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I can't let you buy nothing. So I want you to know when, I, when he come, I'm going to get him back. <laughs> he took me to Big T. I'm going to take him to Nordstrom. <laughs> say, get what you want. <laughs> when he gets the cash register, I'm say, back in the day, we say, psych. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't, hold on, you got to be old to remember psych. How many folk, how many folk remember sight? Oh, y'all, hold on. But y'all, boy, we used to have that thing now. Psych. <laughs> okay, all right. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you tithe mint, deal, and cumin, you have neglected the weightier provisions of the law. What's that? Justice mercy and faithfulness but these are the things you should have done without neglecting the other what was that the tithing amen we believe in that because because we believe in it because god said it we believe in it because god commands it we believe in it because god blesses it we also believe in it because when you don't do it god will curse you amen amen Father in heaven, we come to you right now. We have tried you, and we're going to keep trying you. You have proven to be faithful. Bless us as we give, as we give. Bless us as we bring, the, bring your tithe. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone who may have not been born again, uh, repent and bring it today. It's that simple. Say, Lord, look here. Somebody look at me right now. If the truth be told, you will say, Lord, I know better. Lord, I was taught better. And today, I'm going to do better. Not that I'm going to do better later. I'm going to do better when. Remember this about repentance. Y'all with me? Repentance is always a now. It is, it's never a later. Did y'all get that? Whenever God is challenging us to repent, he said, you got to do it when? Right now. You can't say, Lord, I'm going to repent tomorrow. Uh-uh. His repentance means that I have changed my mind. And it is now controlling my behavior. Are y'all with me here? All right. Come on, give us some direction. Come on, God bless you. God bless you, baby. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. I see y'all, little kids. God bless you. Amen. bless you. God bless you. Come on, God bless you. I see you, Sister Gloria, Nitra, I see y'all. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Deacon Gomby. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, man. All right, Daniel. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on, God bless you. Amen. the people said amen I'm praying for all of you all who are grieving the death of OJ Simpson amen I know y'all grieving death of OJ say amen somebody said what is the pastor talking about national figure y'all amen Hold on, shoot. Our country, either we have, either it's OJ or it's Trump. 
that's pretty much what how that's what our country look like. Trump is going on trial tomorrow, and he got to be there. I want to know, and I'm getting ready to get to the lesson. I want to know how in the world can you be on trial and, and run for the being the president? I'm talking about with a legit opportunity to win. Oh, y'all with me here? He got a legit chance to win. Lord have me. What kind of country we have? Father, help we come to you right now. We need your prayer for preaching. Your people need it for hearing and listening and responding. Forgive us of our sins. Pray for our world. First of all, the United States. We pray for. We pray that you would be with us, even in the midst of seeming judgment. Pray for Israel, for they are being attacked. We need you. Hold off the evil one in Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Remember, you, remember to pray for Israel. I said remember to pray for Israel. Remember this about Israel. You, you always keep your eye on Israel. Israel is the timetable. Israel, whatever's happening there will always let you know how close we're getting to the Lord's return. Are y'all with me? They just got bombed, right? Woe unto those who did that. Are y'all with me here? So, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I need your prayers. I need a little, probably a little bit more time because I need to kind of go into really lecture I had a little preachy in it at eight. I don't I'm not gonna really have it like that. I'm gonna just because I need to say what I need to say. Amen. Amen. I thank God for having a church where I can do it like this and not always have to go with the three points in the poem. Amen. Yes, I'll be doing that for Pastor Alvin Dixon at three thirty. I ain't asking nobody to go. Amen. I'm gonna do that and get on out of God. Say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter fourteen. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. You, read, you need to read this passage. This is, this, is, this is one of the toughest passages in the New Testament. I did, I did my due diligence. I was, if I didn't read it 50 times, I was close in different translations all week. I lived and slept with this text because of how, how challenging it could be. I'll read it, just a couple of verses. Uh, verse 2, it says, For one who speaks in a tongue, say tongue, does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit he speaks mysteries. Y'all see that? All right, look at verse 4. One who speaks in a tongue. Y'all see that? edifies himself. The one who prophesies edifies the church. You all with me? Verse 5. Now I wish that you all spoke in what? Uh-uh. He said tongues. Nah. First he said tongues. And then he said tongues. So we got to look at what was the change. You all with me? Finally, verse 40. But let all things be done, I'll use King James, decently and in order. I'm going to try to talk about watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. You, listen to this. A couple of things. Number one, do not, real talk, do not close your Bible. Because uh, I'm going to be pointing things out. And if you close your Bible, this will mean less than if you keep it open. Second of all, 
whatever you've ever seen, whatever you have heard about tongues in the past, forget about it. Try to forget about it. As I said at 8 o'clock, in a sarcastic way, forget about it because 101 times out of 100, it was wrong. Now, y'all hear that sarcasm? 101 times out of 100, it was wrong. Y'all with me? So we studying today. So after Paul presents God's agape love as the more excellent way above all others, all other ministries and gifts. Paul here at 1 Corinthians confronts the carnal fleshly misunderstanding and misuse of the gift on speaking in tongues. These carnal Christians had so abused the gift of tongues, the church was resembling the tower at Babel, where God confused the languages. The practice of ecstatic utterances was was, com was common in many of the pagan religions of Paul's day, including those religions in Corinth. These pagan worshipers would drink. They would dance themselves into a frenzy. They would be drunk, uh, unconscious. They believed that their spirit left their body and commune with their so-called God. These ecstatic frenzies were often accompanied by some sexual orgies and perversions of all sorts. In the church in Corinth, much of the so-called tongue speaking and speakers had taken on the form and flavor of paganism. Everyone now was doing and saying what was right in his own eyes. It was chaos, out of control, with little or no God and worship. No edification of the church because they were extremely carnal. We can be sure that much of the so-called tongue speaking were counterfeit and phony. They were in no spiritual condition to exercise any kind of spiritual gift. How could a carnal congregation so worldly, so opinionated, selfish, cliquish, envious, jealous, argumentative, arrogant, disorderly, uh, inconsiderate, gluttonous, immoral, again, ex exercise gifts of the spirit? Let me, let me see if I can get this in. Brothers and sisters, you cannot walk in the spirit and exercise the flesh at the same time. Do I have a witness here? I say you, you cannot walk in the spirit and exercise the flesh. You can't walk in the spirit while living in sin. Are y'all going to help me? There, there's a war going on on the inside. If you're a child of God, there's a war going on the inside. And here's how you know you're in a war. Sin ought to bother you. And I can't tell anybody, if you can sin without it bothering you, you got to go back to Calvary. You got to go back to the cross because there's something wrong with your so-called salvation. Do I have any witnesses here? Yes, yes. That, that, in our text, Paul was correcting some carnal confusion concerning the gift of speaking in tongues. Uh, in Corinth, they were confusing. Here it is, you all. Here's the lesson. In Corinth, they were confusing the counterfeit speaking in a tongue. Y'all got it? With the genuine gift of speaking in tongues. Plural. Let me say it again. They were counterfeiting speaking in a tongue, singular, with the genuine gift of speaking in tongues, plural. They were confusing ecstatic utterance with foreign languages. The true gift of tongues with, was the ability to speak in, a, in known languages of the world without any previous knowledge of the language to the speaker. 
while, while the counterfeit, uh, the phony, experience is speaking in an ecstatic utterance, and it is no way connected to a known language anywhere. Notice how Paul distinguishes the two. Here's the interpretation, this is, here's the interpretive lesson in this sermon. Watch how Paul distinguishes the two. Paul uses the singular word tongue to refer to the counterfeit. Verse 2, verse 4, verse 13, 14, 19, and 27. While when Paul refers to the true gift, that everybody did not have, he uses the plural, uh, verses 6, 18, 22, 23, 39, only with two exceptions, 26 and 27. All of this confusion was causing the church to neglect the preaching of the word of God in favor was of speaking in a tongue. As Paul tries to steer the wayward Corinthians away from the narrow their narrow obsession with all kind of tongues, ah, uh, the counterfeit and the legit, he argues, watch this, that, that prophecy, he argues that preaching is superior to tongues. Are y'all with me here? Let me say it again. This passage is not simply about tongues. This passage is Paul arguing that preaching is superior to tongues. And if they was going to seek anything, they ought to be seeking that. Y'all with me here? Let me see if I can give you some quick points here So I because I want to get somewhere today. Number one, Paul said, speaking in a tongue without interpretation does not build up the church, but preaching does. This, this gibberish wasn't edifying the church. You know, when you come to church, you struggling. You ain't trying to hear no tongue. When you struggling, you want to hear about how to deal with the storms in your life. When, 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 you, struck, when, you, when you come to church, you want to you wanna deal with, with the trials and the temptations and, and the problems. and You, you, you want to hear something about forgiveness. You want to hear something about love. And, and you, you want to hear something about some joy. Do I have a witness here? Because the joy of the Lord is ours. I don't know about you, but when I come to church, I'm not trying to hear about no gibberish, something that I'm not going to understand. But in preaching, Lord have mercy. The purpose of preaching, Paul gave it to us. He said the purpose of preaching is, first of all, edification. Number two, exhortation. And number three, consolation. Do I have a witness? In edification, in other words, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, he who are spiritual, restore such a one. That, that, that's going to edify you. Do I have a witness here? You see, also, some encouragement. Some people need some exhortation. In other words, they that wait on the Lord. Somebody needs to wait on the Lord right now. Somebody has to make a decision. But you need, you need some encouragement to wait on the Lord. Isaiah said he'll renew your strength. You, you'll mount up on wings like eagles. You'll run and not get, get weary. You'll walk and not faint. You need some encouragement. What's some encouragement? I can do all things through Christ who gives me some strength. Somebody said, I need some consolation. Well, if you need some consolation, somebody may have died in your family, in your life. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Do I have a witness here? Let not your heart be troubled. Talk to me, somebody, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Somebody needs some consolation. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. Paul said, whatsoever we do, make sure we do it for the glory of God. In other words, if you're preaching, I got to preach for the glory of God. I, I can't preach, Lord have mercy, uh, based on the response of the people. I got to preach to the glory of God. Hold on. When you're singing, you, you got to sing, Lord, have mercy to the glory of God, as if ain't nobody listening but God. Do I have a witness here? When you're teaching, when you're ushering, you got to usher like you're ushering some of God's children. 
When you're witnessing, it's for the glory of God. When you're giving, it's for the glory of God. Watch this. We must not confuse religious excitement with spiritual encouragement. I'm trying to get somewhere. Speaking in tongues. Uh, speaking in a tongue excited the emotional while ignoring the rational. It led to them being unconcerned about the teaching of God. They, they, they were not interested in learning. They were not interested in the Bible. They were not interested in truth, but in experiences. Watch here. Not, not, they were not interested in right doctrine, but in good feeling. Their, their, their ecstatic utterances led to not being interested in pleasing God. Our experience always won out over truth. Emotions always won out over reason. Self always won out over God's will. They never checked what they did, watch this, or said with scripture. They never tested the spirit to see if it was from God. Here's what I want to say. If it sounded good, they believed it. If it felt good, they liked it. Somebody look at me right now. Be careful. I've learned something. Uh, whatever I like too much ain't good for me. I wish I had somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Whatever you enjoy, I mean, you really enjoying that is probably, y'all ain't talking to me. I dare you to sit down with a meal that you really like. You say, you know what, um, give me another one and then give me something wrong. You, whenever you enjoy something too much, you got to check it. At least I do. I don't know about you. Speaking in the tongue was also inferior, also an inferior benefit to unbelievers. Just imagine someone stands up with a style of gibberish. Then another stands up at the same time with some unfamiliar sound. Then somebody else stands up, seemingly competing with each other. Nobody understands what nobody else is saying. The only thing that's accomplished is you stood out, you sounded like this and that. You, you, matter of fact, you start sounding superstitious. Uh, in other words, it looked like a seance in Corinth. Chanting and babbling was going on. Are y'all with me here? Uh, and the unsaved and the crowd was leaving saying, them folk are crazy and they are tripping. But in contrast, I'm talking about preaching now. I said in contrast. It's a difference in getting up with some tongues versus getting up saying, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It, it's different than saying, but the wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's different when you're saying, I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you shall. It's the difference when you say, behold, I stand at your door and knock and any man hears my voice and opens the door. I'm just in Sunday school. I'll come and sup with him. And it's a difference in hearing somebody say from the Bible, and this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, and he who has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. Come on, help me. These things I have written to you, I'm in the Bible, who believe on the name of the Son of God in order that you may have, y'all ain't talking to me. Let me see if I can give you one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Are y'all with? That's different than speaking in the tongue. There is no intelligent edification, exhortation, consolation, glorification, illumination, information, celebration, or inspiration in a tongue. Nor, nor, nor is there any intelligent, watch it, supplication. I'm in the Bible, verses 14 and 16. Paul talks about praying in tongue. Here's my, here's my response. Watch out that you don't allow your mind to drift off into ecstasy or into some kind of self-manufactured hallucinogenic state. 
Remember prayer. Remember this about prayer. Prayer is spiritual warfare. Praying in gibberish is perverted praying. That's per you done perverted prayer now. Y'all ain't with me here. I said prayer is spiritual warfare. You, can't, you cannot talk to God, Lord have mercy, without bothering the devil at the same time. Not if you're really praying. You can't talk to God. I'm talking, about, I'm talking here it is, our Father which art in heaven. That bothers the devil. Hallowed be thy name. That bothers the devil. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. He don't like that. Give us this day. You, whenever you are saying stuff like that, that's bothering that you know what art the devil. Here's what I'm saying here. In other words, you better make sure your mind is focused on what you are saying to the Lord. And, and your words ought to make sense to God first. Watch this. To everybody else who is listening in on your prayer. Watch it. I'm getting ready to say something. Paul says, don't pray with some gibberish and expect your listeners to say amen. I'm in the Bible. To say amen. Are y'all with me here? Every word in public. Every sermon, every prayer, every song must be able, watch to hear this, to be endorsed by the listeners with an amen. Verse number 16. Amen. Y'all know what amen means? Y'all looking like you don't know. Somebody don't know what amen it means. I agree, Reverend. Amen means keep on preaching. Amen means you're right. Amen means you're in the Bible. Are y'all with me? Everybody needs to be able to say what? Every word of worship, every word of praise, every word of appreciation must be endorsed with an amen. Is there anybody here that want to practice today? Do I have a witness here? Paul said when you say thank you, Lord, folk ought to understand what you're talking about. Do I have a witness here? Lord, thank you for the roof over our head. And thank you for the shoes on our feet, breath in our body, fingers on my hand, food on my table, Water for hydration. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you for my church. And thank you for Jesus. And thank you for heaven. And thank you for my hope. Do I have a witness here? Songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his what? I, I needed to stop right there. Because I really ain't trying to preach. Now, let us look at two things, two more things. Here it is, y'all, am I doing all right? Yeah. Having said all of that, here's what I want to talk about. First of all, before I go get to the order of tongues, I want to deal with the cessation of tongues. Chapter 13, verse number 8 says, Here's what it says, chapter 13, verse number 8. It says, love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they shall be done away with, right? Y'all see that? Now watch this. And if there are tongues, they will what? Come on, talk to me. They said what? Notice, he didn't say they would be done away with. He did not use the same verb with tongues that he used with prophecy. Can I share something with you about prophecy? If, we, if, if we're using it, if we're using prophecy in the term of, in the way of uh, dealing with the future, this is beautiful. Y'all ready? All prophecy will sooner or later be history. Y'all didn't get it? All prophecy at some point going to be what? All of the prophecies about Jesus coming the first time that was prophesied in the Old Testament. Talk to me, somebody. Everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament, son gonna be born and call his name, all that. It's now history. Why? Because he already came. Prophecy gonna be done away with. Why? Because prophecy sooner or later gonna turn to history. Lord have mercy. But he said tongues will cease. 
What do you mean with that verb here? It means literally it's going to run its course. It's going to run out. Tongues is going to basically stop. Here it is. Y'all read me? Tongues is, watch this, it's not simply a spiritual gift, but it's also a sign gift. Do I have any Bible students here? A sign gift. What's significant about a sign gift? All sign gifts were temporary. Y'all didn't hear? Healings. Temporary. Miracles. Temporary. Y'all look at Let me tell Can I just be honest with you? I believe in the miracle working Lord. But ain't no need of us lying. When you read the Bible, there ain't but three periods that, that, that where you find miracles. Period number one, Moses and Joshua. Period number two, Elijah and Elisha. Period number three, Jesus and the apostles. After that, you ain't seeing none until you get to the millennial kingdom. They gonna what? Seize. Why? Here it is. Because tongues in, back in the day was simply the way of translating one language to another. Hold on, y'all in here. Now we have three, over 3,020 versions. We have over 3,658 languages. Tongues has ceased. Am I doing all right? That, so that's the cessation of it. Now let's look at the order of tongues. Y'all with me? Y'all really want this? I got 13 of them. Number one, not all believers spoke in tongues. Speaking of tongues has never been the evidence of salvation. It, 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 hold on. At one point, it may have been the evidence of being spirit-filled and spirit-baptism, but only in the book of Acts. It's not the evidence of salvation, and everybody don't speak in tongues. Chapter 12, verse number 30. Y'all with me? Second of all, tongues ah, should never have never been more important than preaching. Paul said, how can they hear without a preacher? Y'all ain't talking to me. How beautiful are the feet. He didn't say that about tongue speakers. He didn't say nothing about your feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings. It should have never been more important or highlighted over Preaching. Am I doing all right? Yes, Chapter 14, verse 1 through 5. Number 3. We're doing all right. Speaking in tongues doesn't communicate or benefit the church. All it does is lead to confusion. Chapter 14, verse 2, verse 6. Number 4. My Sebastian, you doing all right? I got one that's going to cause a little time, though. Tongue speakers. Tongue speaking. Oh, excuse me. Tongue speakers did not know themselves what they were saying. They up there talking about, and they didn't know what they were saying. I'm talking about the gibberish now. Are y'all with me here? I said, I'm talking about the gibberish now. I'm talking about what Paul was saying in verse 5. What he was saying in verse 6. What he said in verse number 18. What he said in verse 22. What he said in verse 23. I'm talking about that. They did not know what they were saying. Number 5. Tom speaking without an interpreter never edified the church. 
Verse 5, verse 17. I'm almost finished. It is, and it was more important to speak in the language of the people than in an unknown tongue. I'm speaking English. That's more benefit than me getting up here and say, Oh, I used to be a come on, start story being gratis. Somebody said, if I start doing that, you, guess what you say? I think pastor that went crazy. <laughs> Some of you all may know Spanish as a second language. But I hazard to hunt everybody in here know English. Are y'all with me here? Where am I? Number seven. That's where I was. Verse four, chapter 14, verse 19. Number seven. To emphasize tongues above understanding and edification is a sign of immaturity and carnality. Chapter 14, verse 20. Tongues, this is number eight, are not for soul winning. You will not ever win a soul speaking in tongues. Chapter 14, verse 23. Tongues should never be used, here it is, by more than three people in one service. Huh? Let me see if I can read that one. Verse 27. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by, by watch it, it should be by two or at the most what? Watch this. Paul said, in a service, if you have more than three people, out of order. Out of order. I ain't finished yet. Y'all with me? Watch this. The next one is number 10. Tongue speaking should never happen simultaneously. In other words, even though there's three, they can't speak at the same time. Now, you can't tell me if you've been to a service, you saw that this order like this. Chapter 14, verse 27. Y'all with me? Number 11. Tongues should never happen in a church if there is no interpreter. Somebody, watch this, needs to be an interpreter. Here's what I want you all to help me with. I dare you to find one passage of scripture that identified an interpreter. The Bible don't even ever identify a person who was an interpreter. Paul, let me, let me make sure I clarify something I said last week. Paul never spoke in a tongue but he did speak in tongue. He never spoke in a tongue because that was gibberish. That was unknown. He said, but I've talked, I spoke in tongues and languages. Watch this. Y'all ready? But he also said, I never did it in a church. Paul said, I never did. He said, I never even exercised my gift of speaking in tongues in a church. Also, you'll never see a passage of scripture where he did it. But here we are. Am I helping anybody? You got to have an interpreter, right? Here it is. You got three people max, right? And in one church service, you can only have one interpreter for all three. And you can't and you cannot manufacture 
or bring in your own interpreter. Y'all see what here it is? I'm finished. I'm finished. Y'all got your Bibles open? All right, let's look at it. I'm finished when I read this. Chapter 14, verse number 33 and 34. I told you don't close your Bible. So you close them, huh? You close them anyway, huh? I asked you not to do that. And you did it anyway. Here's the last one. 1433. Y'all clear? For God has not for, for God is not a God of confusion. But of what? Here's the here's the key key phrase. Here's the key phrase. As in all the churches of the saints. Y'all see that? He said, I ain't just talking about Corinth now. He said, I'm talking about, he said, I'm going to tell you something about every church in the, in, that I've been to. He says, let the woman, or women, plural, speak in tongues in the churches. Oh, that ain't what it says? Hold on. Let me see. Let the women keep what? In the what? Wait a minute. For they are not permitted to what? what? Where? When the church is gathered for worship. As I close here, watch this, you all. Here it is. Here it is. I, I announced to you all there was two subjects in this text. What's the two subjects? Preaching and tongues. So what is Paul talking about? Preaching in tongues. With the church is what? Gathered for worship, edification, and exposition. Watch this. That's what it says. Some, I can hear somebody say, well, Pastor, what about, I don't know. Whatever I teach something like this, Pastor, what about so and so? I, hold on, let me share this what I learned when I was a kid. What Mama said, and my father said, what they did down the street ain't got nothing to do with us. Are y'all with me here? If they can have the Bible wrong in the church at Corinth, they can have the Bible wrong anywhere. Are y'all with me here? So what's all this about? I gave that because that's how we're going to operate here. If you never talk about how you're going to operate, how can we say something to someone about, no, we don't do that here. That's how we operate here. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap pray. <laughs> now, is it possible that you have a different interpretation? Here's how I want to respond to that. It might be. But I'll be doggone, you better put more time in than I did. The first thing I'm going to ask you, how much time did you put in? Second of all, I'm going to ask you, how many word studies did you do? I'm going to ask you about the context and culture. I'm going to deal with, hold on, do you have your syntax right? So, so, if, if you're gonna, if, so you may have a different opinion. But your opinion must, must come with some, with some, watch this, with some, Work behind it. Does that make any sense? Give the Lord another hand clap, praise. Therefore, let everything be done decently and in order. What is it that Corinth did not have? Watch this, you all. I'm going to make it simple. They didn't have an order of service. That's why we have an order of service. So we can say, this is what we expect. But we, Hold on, but we still leave some room for the Holy Spirit. Because there's times when he said, no, uh -uh, just get right on up there. 
and preach. Amen. At uh, Pastor Banks' funeral, um, at Pastor Banks' funeral, um, there was a time in the service. Amen. And uh, Pastor Gann, and I, I, I applauded it. Pastor Gann got up, because they still had a lot of stuff to read. They had resolutions to read and all that kind of stuff. He said, you know what, we need to hear preaching right now. He said, I know, what the, I know what, the, what the program, he said, but he said, based on where the spirit is, let's have preaching right now. And Pastor Wade got up and preached. Amen. Amen. So I, well, I said all that to say, yeah, the Holy Spirit, we still give him room if he wants to change the order of service. But the Holy Spirit also works with our order. Yes, he will. And one, here's one of the things I want us to be careful of. Uh, be careful of. The time that we put, that we start, if we don't start on that time, then we already then sinned against the Holy Spirit. He said, because that's what I'm working with. I'm working with what you said. Now, there's a time on here that we go in, right? No. If it's on here, take it off. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a beginning, but we be careful not to put an ending on it. Amen. If God bless you, give him a hand clap praise. We're ready to go. Amen. All right, I got that, that chapter behind me. Amen. All right, next week, we've already, in a sense, dealt with chapter 15 with the resurrection. So we'll conclude uh, next week with chapter 16. Amen. So that means we would have went all the way through uh, uh, a survey, basically, of the book of 1 Corinthians. Give the Lord a hand clap, pray. <laughs> Amen. Thank you all for hanging. I know it's, it could be a little, a little monotonous, a little boring, but hopefully, hopefully, it was, hopefully it was interested enough. Let us stand. Amen. My goal, it wasn't, it wasn't about entertaining, it wasn't about how many amens. I wanted to make sure we got this and, we, and, and that there's a rhyme and a reason but because of what we do. Amen. 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 When the church is gathered for worship. So, and don't take my statement out of context. When the church is gathered for worship here at the Paradise Baptist Church, it'll be a male. Amen. What about the classroom? That's not what I said. Did y'all hear that? That's not what I said. So don't take that and say, I said, when the church is what? Gathered for worship, the biblical expositor who is responsible for what? Exhortation, encouragement, and consolation will be what? A man. I'm in the Bible. I'm, right, I'm writing in that text. It's, it's, it's my job primarily. Uh, I have to be, the Lord holds me responsible for every word that's said here. Oh, am I right? And if it's wrong, we can't say amen. We can't, we can't, amen, as I said, it's an endorsement that you agree with the preacher and the Bible. Are y'all with me here? We we'll suggest what? You need to do some more Bible work. Or you'll be endorsing what you don't know. Are y'all with me here? That's why I said, look at Bible study that you cannot listen to me. There is no substitute. Are y'all with me here? What I did today was as close to Bible study as you can, but it, ain't, it wasn't because you couldn't ask me no question. You couldn't ask me no questions. I'm in motion. I, it's a lecture, pre a sermon, sermon presentation type lecture. Amen? Bible study is when you can ask questions. Amen. You can get some some questions answered. And remember this, 
Every time you get a question answered, you grow. Every time you get a question answered about the subject, we ain't talking about going to left field with a question. I don't, I don't entertain left field questions. I'm not going to entertain nothing about uh, 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 the millennial kingdom if I'm dealing with uh, uh, loving your brother. Ain't no need to be answering about uh, tribulation period, but we ain't talking about tribulation period. Stay with us. What the what? Subject. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I, you know what? I don't know about none of that. That's all right. I remember when I didn't know about it. I remember when I didn't know anything about any of that. But all I remember is, watch this, I was under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was convicting me. He was saying to me, you need to now place your faith in Jesus and your membership in church. Did y'all hear that? I remember that. Place your faith in Jesus and your membership in the church. Without that, um, without that, um, I don't know what's going on in your life. And you don't need it. No, assur no assurances. No assurances. Are y'all with me here? Without, without your faith in Christ and, and, and being a part of the Lord's local church, you really have no assurances. Amen. I don't assure anybody of salvation who don't believe in church membership. I said, you can't just do that. Amen. That's like going to a restaurant and saying, look, I believe in eating, but I don't believe, believe in paying. <laughs> well, I'm fine with that, but you ain't going to eat with me. <laughs> we'll never eat together. Head bow. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on that cross for my sins. Come into my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, Christ is in your life. If you know you need a church home, a church family like ours, you're here. You're here for a reason. The pastor who has at least been able to give it to you the way I did. I want you to remain standing, and we'll talk to you about some of what this means. We can't tell it all to you, but we can at least get you to understand what you, the decision that you've made in your life. Don't worry about who's standing or who's sitting. Remember that this is your salvation, and God will remind us, you heard the gospel preached, and you didn't respond. So, again, if you, if the Lord wants you to respond by rem and actually to remain standing, please do so. While those who say, Pastor, I knew Christ as my Savior before I came to church, and I have Bible proof of it, and I'm a member of whatever church, I'm in regular standing, and my pastor knows me. If you can say that, take your seat. But if you don't, if you can't say some, if there's one thing of that that you can't say, don't don't sit down. Don't sit down. Let's give the Lord a hand clap praise. <laughs> Amen. We're ready to go. Amen. Thank you all. I'm, I thank God it didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take today. Amen. All right, uh, we're ready to go. If you have not given the Lord's tithes, you can um, you can come and give those, and we'll see you. On next Sunday, we ask you to be here certainly for 8 o'clock. We got Pastor uh, Larry Bryce. Amen? Amen? Also, tomorrow night, uh, our discipleship. Don't miss it. Amen? Let's stand. Amen. Father, have we come to you right now after spending time in